Bloggos, pow! Right, we're going to have a quick look at the Retro Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi mini Linux uh, computer with a, uh, an image to run an operating system called Retro Pi, which runs emulators. I'm not running everything from it. Uh, there's a few I've missed out because I couldn't get them to work or uh, it was just a pain in the ass to get working. So bear that in mind, I'm running what I can run. The RetroPie image I'm using is called Nacho 64 gig image, which comes with a lot of things preloaded. Also has a bizarre collection of retro game themed MP3s running over the background. If you're wondering why we're talking about Amiga games and listening to the Sonic tune, yeah, that's why. Okay, so here's the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, network cable input, four USBs, HDMI, that mini USBs for power, headphone jack, so pretty standard. And on the back here we've got a uh, micro SD card slot. I've got 64 gigabyte sand disk in there at the moment, so there we go, very small thing. Now let's put it in a case. So there we have it, our Raspberry Pi in its case. So all we need now is to plug this in. Uh, I've already preloaded a uh, Retro Pi on this uh, little SD card here. Uh, but before we do, let's have a quick look at some controllers we're going to uh, be using with it. So first off, we have a very bog standard USB. SNES controller. Very standard, very cheap, really really spongy horrible joypad so that wouldn't do. So I got one of these, a uh, Famicom uh, FC30 Pro Game Controller. This is made by a company called 8BitDo. 8BitDo? 8BitDo? I don't know how you pronounce it. But it's a nice little thing. That uh, is a lot better than the one on that cheapy SNES pad. Got uh, two lots of shoulder buttons. I imagine those would be quite hard to reach if you're playing PlayStation games. Little analog sticks. Flex and start. This is Bluetooth. Uh, I haven't managed to get it to talk to my um, Pi properly yet, but uh, it's a nice little pad. I do recommend them. Very, very good. But if you're going to go completely mental for your controller, It won't even fit in frame. This is a Hori um, ROP V4 Hayabusa stick. Now this is really made for PlayStation two, uh, 3 and 4 for fighting game tournament things. But this is fantastic for playing MAME or Peace Engine shooters or anything like that. And works completely perfectly with the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's a bit bigger than a Raspberry Pi, so that's uh, definitely the uh, the best controller to console ratio I've ever seen. Right, so let's move on to the Pi itself. Let's get this plugged in and see what it does. Right, well, let's start with uh, Amiga. Now uh, the Amiga emulator is uh, a version of uh, UAE. So let's get started. Now one thing I'll point out now, if you're using a, uh, an emulator for computers like an Amiga or C64 or anything like that, it's best to uh, have a keyboard and mouse plugged in. So what should we play on the Amiga? Definitely not Trump Castle, that's for sure. Well that's a riot. Okay. So those tokens are two disk game. I'm trying to set both disks into the two virtual drives. Hmm, bit of corruption there. Oh, it's all good.
shows up quite heavily bordered uh, for reasons uh, my TV I normally run my Pi on uh, has weird resolution problems so I fiddled with the resolution to get to even display properly so uh, apologies for that in advance but here we go Tarakan I'm so rusty at. <laughs> I used to be good at this. So yeah, that's um pretty decent. It's nice to be able to play Tolkien. That the hassle of getting your Amiga out. Well, that's really a hassle for me. But, you know, if you've got it in something as small as a Raspberry Pi, that's pretty sweet, isn't it? Oh, shit. Oh, there we go, that's Amiga. Let's move along to whatever's next. Well, next, where have we gone? Uh, the Amstrad. So I could already hear uh, Chinivision turning in his grave that I'm uh, using some emulation to look at Amstrad games. Sorry, Chinny. Go. This is a very good port of this on the Amstrad. So let's press the key for, for gear, accelerate, brake, left, right, pause, turbo. Oh, I don't know what's going on here, but it's uh, switching the, the gears up and down while I'm doing this. There's sort of something wrong with the control inputs, but as you can see, it's uh, running at a fair old pace, which is nice. The Amstrad version is, uh, is very good. I'm just not very good at it by little things. Oh, I don't know what's going on with that. Constant gear changing, something wrong with the control config on the... Uh, old Amstrad emulator here. It's probably why Chini absolutely detests emulators. But yeah, it seems to run it okay as far as I can see. Just need a bit of tweaking on the controls to uh, sort out that um, <laughs> gear swapping will argue there. Also, I'm playing this on a, a uh, wireless keyboard a dongle thing so it's not quite as uh, responsive as maybe I would have hoped it to be but hey ho not not the fault of the game or the emulator really that's more to do with this shitty piece of hardware keyboard I've got for running my Pi so yeah Amstrad not bad not bad at all So here's the uh, next thing, arcade games. So this is the big one, so the main reason I, I wanted to have a Pi is to play arcade games. So I'm going to run a couple of games from each end of the performance spectrum to give you an idea. Now the arcade emulator uses four, it uses a version of Final Burn, 
two versions of Final Burn and two versions of MAME here and you can select which emulator you try so I have tried a few different emulators with different games you'll see the, uh, the results here so as a starter we're going to load up an old favourite go it's Ghouls and Ghosts so that's running Final Burn Alpha to run this Oh yeah, there we You already see that's um, running pretty well. Oh dear, old man. Snap out it, Arthur. So we're all good so far. So, of course, Ghost, not a massively demanding game in the grand scheme of things. But good to be able to uh, play it like this on a console. You can just take around the, uh, the in laws when you know you're in for uh, an afternoon of boredom. That's actually a massive fear by taking around my, my mum's place when I'm visiting. And on the other end of the scale, sting, sticking with Capcom, is uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. So I see this is quite a, a bit more advanced than Ghouls and Ghosts. But yeah, it moves on a fell pace. Yeah, a little bit of screen tearing I'm thinking there with the vertical scrolling. Double super with both Strider and Ryu on the screen at the same time. It's not. Oh, there we go. Oh, it all went a bit wrong. But yeah, pretty good stuff. Nice way of uh, playing some Capcom fighters. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to quickly touch on the Atari stuff. Uh, as you can imagine, it's going to run at a, at a decent old speed. Um, there's not going to be anything wrong with it. However, we're not going to play Bachelor Party. So, what should we play? Bloody human freeway, I've never heard of that. Wow. Let's have gone berserk, that's always good. Yeah, you can expect it's berserk. You wouldn't expect this thing to have any problems running a Atari 2600 game, so brilliant. Skip to the end. Oh, I'm going to skip past the other Atari games. You can imagine that well, the Atari 5200 and 7800, they're going to run as you'd expect, So, uh, which is very well. But let's have a just quick look at the links. Obviously, it's a handheld machine. 
Uh, let's have a go on one of my favourites, which is Road Blasters. Obviously, it's very blocky because the Lynx had a very small, not particularly high resolution screen. It's a bit flickery with the old emulation on there. But look at that, that runs really, really fast. That's lovely. It's a shame about the screen resolutions because this is a cracking version of Road Blasters. Really nice and fast. If you squint a bit, it really does look like the arcade game. Might be running a tad fast actually. Very impressed with that. Very impressed. Four. So let's have a look, see what we can play on this. These shortcuts are really handy for navigating to the game you want to play. So here we go. We're going to play. Iridium. Now unlike the Amstrad emulator this does the load command automatically for you. So it, whereas a keyboard's useful for the Commodore 64 emulator it's not necessary. However the load times are realistic. There we go, it's Iridium. One thing I've noticed with this um, for some reason you've got a mouse pointer overlaid across the uh, the, the play area, it's very strange um, very odd ok well ignoring that, sticking it down here on the bottom oh, <laughs> that button brings up the image <laughs> the uh, emulator options which is very useful, you can swap your cartridge uh, sorry, your joystick ports around and assign a mouse or a joystick to it it's, uh, yeah, it's quite handy to have so let's get started. Well, mind you, I was going to do a video on Commodore 60. Oh, sorry, on Iridium style shooters. Uh, I still might do that actually. But yeah, um. Very nice. It sounds spot on, so if you like your uh, SID emulation accurate, that's uh, always uh, good to know. Oops. Yeah, I never was very good at Uidium. However, I did. Whoops. To take a perverse delight in running on my main cabinet at one point when I had one. As you can imagine, ColecoVision is not really going to cause any problems there for it. I mean, you've got a nice selection of games, none of which mean anything to me. I've never, never had a ColecoVision, so. Yeah. Oh, now, this is important Daphne. Daphne is a Laserdisc uh, emulation. Uh, of which I can't actually get the input controls to work, but I means you can load up something like Cobra Command, which well, okay, you can play it on the Mega CD, you can play it on the Saturn or the PlayStation, but having that in its glorious laser disc resolution, that's lovely. That's, that's really, really nice. I must um, battle with the emulator and get the controls to work. Alert, 
mission is to destroy the stronghold. That's all very techno police, isn't it? It's brilliant. Right, so I managed to put a credit in. I don't think I'm actually going to be able to control it, though. Oh, I can. Okay. Ah, oh, she's okay. She's a harbour chick. Ooh, controversial. Yeah, I do like Cobra Commander likes it on the uh, Mega CD. I did play it on the arcade a couple of times. Probably got about that far. But yeah, it's good to see these old Laserdisc games being emulated on the um, on something. I haven't got Space Ace to run on it yet, it sort of boots up and doesn't go much further than the disc recheck. Um, but, um, and Mac 3 works as well, anybody who used to read my blog knows about my fixation with Mac 3. Okay, this is interesting. Game and Watch. Um, technically, not all Game and Watches, but you get the idea that those little uh, LED uh, games that you you'd have uh, a mixture of well, say LED and LCD games. But there's a one really cool thing about it. So let's pick something that I think most people know. There we go. So that's Galaxy Two, of course, best known in this country as Astro Wars. And published over here by Grandstand. Have a look at this, this is really really smart. So it shows you the actual plastic cabinet you would play with and if you move your joystick left or right, look, it moves left or right. Press the button, it goes up and down. Press the start button, the select button, the on button, look, oh, the on button turned on, let's turn it off again. Let's turn it on again. Ah, brilliant. And press the start button. So, and that's really twee, it's a really cute little uh, emulator of uh, almost trying to replicate the, uh, the tactile feeling of playing one of these games, uh, but on an uh, emulation that's uh, it's, uh, really cool. I wonder if it, it simulates the batteries running out halfway through a really decent run, or your... Uh, or the battery's falling out because the battery cover's broken, or your little brother turning it off or screaming it's his turn. Oh, that nice. So, Game Gear, Game Boy run okay. Let's have a quick run at Game Boy Advance. I won't go bother with Game Boy Color either, uh, but let's have a quick go on Game Boy Advance. What should we play here? This was the first game I got my Game Boy Advance back in 2001. Yeah, so I just want to start. It's okay, I thought there was something wrong with the controls here, but no, well, it's fine. But yeah, as you can expect, it's it's a Game Boy Advance emulation. You know, it's not too bad. To be honest, it wasn't really gonna gonna struggle with this. I'm struggling with playing it, but that's a different story altogether. Oh, I've still got some boost now.
But yeah, you can see everyone's Game Boy Advance stuff pretty sweet. And again, it's nice to be able to run these on a big screen. Uh, like I said, with the Link stuff, it's uh, a little well, less of a novelty because you could run Game Boy Advance stuff to uh, uh, the uh, Game Boy Play on the GameCube. Uh, finding one these days at a reasonable price is uh, a bit hard. But uh, yeah, not bad at all. So the television, again I'm not going to bother with it, it's, I care about as much of this as I do about ColecoVision, you know you've got a selection of games there which is nice, very good. Uh, Macintosh, you can boot into Mac OS by the looks of things, <laughs> I haven't really played with this and, I, and again I, it's got no um, nostalgia value for me so I just haven't bothered. Now here's the MAME, so I was talking about the emulators earlier. So again, I have control issues with this, especially with the analog games I'm trying to play, but you can see I've been trying different versions of that one to see if different ROMs run differently, but well, let's run after and you'll see what I mean. So we go after burn up. That one's okay. It's a little bit choppy. Controls aren't all mapped yet. I haven't got round to that. Um, for example, I, I do have a missile button. I was going to say I don't have a missile button, but I do. I definitely do not have any speed buttons, so I can't actually engage the afterburners. <laughs> oh, the irony! So that's nice to see. But, skip back to the menu, let's just run a version of Outrun. I've tried all the different emulators for the arcade, the different versions of Mame and Final Burn here. But oh dear, look how choppy that feels. Oh, it sounds horrible. And this one when you put the coin in. Rude, wobbly sound. Oh, it's painful, isn't it? I mean, you can fiddle with the frame skipping, but it doesn't help a great deal. Um, don't I really understand why it has problems running Outrun, which is a technically an inferior game uh, when it comes to uh, hardware to afterburner uh, it's just it's a bit a bit of a mystery there but yeah it runs far too slow and too choppy really to be playable which is a shame really as you all know that one's one of my favorite games let's crash just for shits and giggles so my system uh, again it's it is you're expecting it's 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 going to work fine, isn't it? Uh, a really nice selection of games, and you know, nicely, yeah. What they call scraped in the trade now. So getting the artwork and the information off the internet based on the uh, titles of the files on your card. So that's all very nice. And Mega Drive, you know, more the same. Um, Mega Drive games do run okay, so. We'll just quickly run something. Let's run Altered Beast. Yeah, no surprises there. It runs very nicely. That's uh, well, most Mega Drive games too. On emulation these days, it's not exactly uh, a massive thing to have a decent Mega Drive emulator. Unless, of course, you're trying to do it on a mobile phone. Sega! 
Welcome to your doom. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, Ultra Beast. Make a drive emulator. Lovely. So here's a uh, nice little emulator to have, MSX. So uh, whereas I've never never had an MSX, I do actually really appreciate the system simply because the Konami games on it were absolutely fantastic. So you know you you know you've got Nemesis, you've got Nemesis 2, uh, you've got three versions of Nemesis 2, uh, Nemesis 3. Um, I mean by today's standards, they do look very dated. And it was more Nemesis. I've also realised as of the uh, three Nemesis games I, I've got there, this is the most <laughs> unforgiving out of them. <laughs> Nemesis was, uh, sorry, uh, Nemesis is always cursed with this sort of uh, jerky scrolling which you're seeing here, which is, uh, oh, can get you killed real quick. But yeah, nice to have a uh, an MSX emulator on here. Uh, there's some cracking games there on the MSX, so that's uh, always a bonus in my book. So here's another uh, odd one, I wouldn't say odd, but uh, potentially a demanding system, the N64. So uh, let's have a quick see how this does. Again we'll use F0 as a test. Already you can hear that's not right. This is already quite slow and painful. Football frames per second there. Having said that, it's moving at a fair pace. The music's lagging a bit. It's a shame because it's not quite, it, it's just a little bit off. It's, it's just not quite all there, is it? I mean, some N64 games run better than others, so, and this is out of the ones that I've uh, tested. It's fine, don't run gold now. That's absolutely, that's. Dreadful. God, you need to go and see a throat doctor. I've no idea if that frame counter in the corner is accurate, but hey ho. 
Well, worth looking at, I suppose. Play around with it. See what N64 games you actually uh, want to play and see if they run okay. Like I said, I don't think you're going to get any of the you know, nice first person shooters to uh, work particularly well, partly because of the frame rate problems they will have on this, and because they are so well suited to the N64 pad. They're playing with something like a 360 pad or a USB SNES pad, it's just not going to cut it. Now here's another oddity, Nintendo DS. So, uh, that's a, uh, probably one of the newest systems on here. Let's have a go on. Oh, let's piss off Nintendo again. It does it in the double screen format there, touch to start. Now is that going to work? Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I baked a cake for you. Yours truly. Princess Toadstool. Peach. There's a bizarre irony here that the Nintendo DS version runs probably better than the N64 version on a on a on a Raspberry Pi. It's so bizarre, isn't it? It's got two screens to deal with. That's really, really strange. Oh, I forgot you could choose which character you could play with. Skip this shit. We get a good idea of how this runs, which is very well. No, I already can't be bothered now. So, new year. As you can imagine it, this runs, you know, fairly decently. No complaints there. Nice fast near to your fighting there. Uh, don't appear to me. Oh, maybe a little bit of screen tearing. Nothing too obscene. Definitely playable enough. Hmm. Yeah, pretty good. Can't complain about that, can we? Again, NES, it, it is what it is, you, you're just going to get, you know, it's a fairly, you know, it's, it's decent enough uh, NES emulation, but you know, nothing particularly technically challenging there. Uh, of course, one of the benefits there of, of this, you can load up um, uh, ROM hacks, so you could have like a, uh, an example if you can find it. 
you could play the English translation of I don't have any on here. I was going to say Sweet Home, but I haven't put it on here. I'll have to put that on here because there's a uh, English language ROM hack of that. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket again, very similar. You know, you're not going to get much in the way of uh, problems out of a Neo Geo Pocket game. Again, as I've said with the other handhelds, it's good to have them on a uh, a large screen for the most part. Uh, PC Engine again, not going to dwell on it. It's a it's a decent decent enough. Uh, one thing I found, I haven't actually managed to find out how to run. PC Engine CD-ROM games on it yet because that would be really useful to be able to run um, Wonder of Blood or uh, Radius 2 something like that that would be really handy but uh, it, at the moment it deals with the Hue card games really nicely so that's good right PlayStation let's have a looky here now if you remember back in my OUYA video way back then I had a quick go on the PlayStation emulation on that, so uh, I played Ridge Racer Revolution. So let's see how that's uh, going to compare on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Of course, it without the uh, Gallagher loading screen. See that shifts along nicely. Well, maybe a little bit of a faint drop there coming into the tunnel, but otherwise, not too bad. Let's just compare something else. So we go Tekken 2. So let's have a quick look at how this works out. And I've forgotten everything about playing Tekken 2. God, I've forgotten <laughs> I've played this completely. You win win. Round two. That one's pretty good. No way I'm going to remember Nina's 10 hit combo. Uh, one more PlayStation game. Okay, we've got Thunder Force 5. Um, obviously, the PlayStation version isn't quite as good as the same version, in my opinion. But hey ho, it's still a cra cracking good game. Yeah, it runs this nicely. I really can't see any problems with it at all. It's uh, running beautifully. Music spot on. There doesn't seem to be any frame drop or noticeable lagging there. Very impressed. Yeah, and a nice easy way to play some PlayStation games when you haven't got 
it wouldn't take a PlayStation somewhere. Of course, make sure you actually play the uh, the game to your own physically, kids. You wouldn't want to visit from fast, would you? Okay, RetroPie is really the emulation uh, front end settings so you can fiddle with your configurations, your Bluetooth, you can delete files, yeah, you know, and it is what it is. Yeah, I keep on saying that, but hey. Uh, 32X, um, you two can actually play possibly the finest Hummingbird shooter on the 32X here, so that's always quite nice. Uh, again, it, the emulation is really similar to the Mega Drive. I'm not going to load anything up because, uh, you know, it was, it runs things like Star Wars Arcade quite nicely, which is good. Virtual Racing. But let's have a quick bash on Virtual Racing. So yeah, that one's, uh, you know, I suppose the 32x version runs, so that's pretty good. No problems with that. The, uh, if you're talking uh, early 90s Polygon games, the uh, Pi doesn't really have a lot of problems throwing them about. I mean, the 32x runs okay, the PlayStation runs okay. Uh, Saturn emulation is in the works, but at the moment is a uh, unplayable sludge bucket. Uh, as you can see, earlier the N64 is a bit hit and miss. Um, but I'm quite impressed with this. This is nice. Yeah. Good, clean family fun. Now this is an important one to me. Uh, Sega CD, of course, Mega CD over here in Europe and Japan um, is an important one. So let's have a quick go on something. Let's have a go on. Good old Sulfide. Slip, Sulfide. This is uses the Sega CD BIOS Sonic the Blue Turd When I first saw this I was blown away it's uh, was a, uh, like an anime launch intro in polygons on a console that was fantastic This is a, really just a basic shooter, but it's just so pretty. Well, so it is about to say stands, it's not very pretty at all, but um, at the time this was outstanding, and uh, the music come, being read off the CD was brilliant, and, it's, and it was excellent. But it, And it's good to see uh, Mega CD games running so well on, a, on an emulated system. Now, if you one thing I will say, if you do get a Raspberry Pi, get a big ass memory card. They take uh, micro SD cards. The bigger one you can get, the better. I'm running a 64 gig one, and I'm currently having to shuffle things in and out because it's uh, 64 gigs not big enough, especially when you're looking at uh, ISOs for Mega CD and PlayStation games, uh, which aren't particularly small.
Alright, so quick going on another Mega CD game. Right, so this is AH3 Thunderstrike, known to real people as Thunderhawk. So, um, again, another one of my favourite Mega CD games. So this one's nicely. It's a uh, fairly straightforward helicopter shoots them up, mission based. A lot of fun. It's, the Mega CD's uh, scaling effects are shown off very well here. And of course, running on the simulator, they look absolutely fine. Not a pretty game by today's standards. It's still a fun game, it's still uh, really satisfying to uh, fly down a uh, column of tanks and blowing them to pieces Area 88 style. It does handle Mega CD emulation really well, this console. So SD-1000, yeah, well, it's 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 a sub mass system kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it's all very nice, but really, again, care for a great deal. But uh, nice to have it on there. Oh look, there's August. Uh, Super Nintendo, you know, standard emulation. I am going to run Star Fox. I have not tested that one here to see what that's like. I can't imagine it being too bad. So far, so good. No, I don't want to do the training. Okay, well, I'll just do the change this week and see how well it runs. Cock. I didn't really want to do the training. But yeah, it runs at a nice spa speed. Um, Do a barrel roll or oh, such shit. Fly through hoops. Where is this? Superman 64? Whoops. Yeah. Runs nicely. Not flying in formation with you fuckers. You stay in formation, you long eared twat. Yeah, well, it's nicely. No surprises there. So there's Vectrex. We'll have a quick play on one of these games. So, um. Oh, Hype Chase is good. I'll have a go on that. Again, that moist mouse pointer keeps on popping up. Obviously, this isn't going to look as good as a real Vectrex, because real Vectrex had that lovely, uh, uh, vector screen. Controls were a bit twitchy. The controls were extremely twitchy. Obviously, this is probably best best works on a uh, on a, on a uh, analog stick like the Vectrex had. God, that's incredibly twitchy. Oh yeah, one's okay. No real complaints there. Again really must get some controls sorted out on some of these games especially when it comes to analog controls you can use an Xbox 360 pad so it's uh, worth knowing that yeah, or I should say a, a wired Xbox 360 pad 
or through Bluetooth, I believe an Xbox One or a PS4 or PS3 pad works. Uh, I am using a good old digital USB pad here. Uh, video pack, again like ColecoVision and television, I don't really care. Virtual Boy, so let's have a quick on something with Virtual Boy. Uh, what should we play? Vertical Force. Now you're not going to get the full 3D effect here. Let's be let's be uh, honest about this. But we can play the uh, Gunhead esque vertical force in several different shades of red. The uh, gimmick here is we could go down to the lower part of the screen or up to the higher part of the screen. And of course, you miss the uh, whole depth thing with uh, playing it on a uh, normal television rather than sticking your eyes into a uh, red tube of razor blades but it is running it fairly well it's, it's, a, it's a basic 16-bit system wasn't it I believe somebody correct me there 16-bit? I can't remember Yeah, nice way to enjoy inverted commas. Multiple colours of red on a uh, Virtual Boy game without uh, the lifetime subscription to Spec Savers. Right, one this one, one this one colour, standard sort of stuff there. You know, handheld games playing nicely on a um, on a big screen. Uh, it does sometimes if the with the vert with the ones when some of the games were vertically orientated like a like a, a tate setup and that's not doesn't seem to be adjustable on the emulator. So if you're playing a vertically scrolling shooter like um, Judgment Silver Sword, it comes up sideways. So forewarned, etc. Infocom, that's uh, advent text adventures, uh, again, no real interest in that. And finally, the Spectrum. So let's have a go there. What we're going to play on the spectrum? There we go. We've got have this nice go on Kronos. Uh, Kronos one two eight to be exact. Uh, there you go. X two zero. Did you know there was a one two eight version? I didn't. Yeah, and this runs nicely. Spectrum games you would have expected them to. Uh, again, uh, so it's still nice to have them in the immediacy to play uh, games like this at will without digging through a mountain of tapes. Or lugging your Spectrum out the loft and plugging in one of the uh, Futures 8 bits uh, IDE SD cardy thingamies. I can't remember what they're called now. Good old star, star quake. Oh, I don't know the code. The star quake's a great little game. Oh, there's a way of jumping, but 
Oh dear. Oh, no. Oh, cheesy manic minor death. Oh, jet set when you're dead. All going a bit wrong, isn't it? Oh, there's a jumpy platformy thing there. There's one like it. I knew it was somewhere flo floating around in the sky and stuff. One of those games you have to map out. That's a lost art these days, mapping video games. It's by Guidebook. So, thanks for making it to the end of this absolutely epic video. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is a, uh, a nice little piece of kit. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree, it's uh, very versatile and the emulators keep on getting improved. Uh, you can connect it to Wi-Fi, update the emulators, which is good, and I might actually get the Dreamcast emulation running. Uh, maybe the PSP emulation will run, run a lot better. I didn't include those two simply because of, well, couldn't get the Dreamcast to work and the PSP to uh, actually function at any level of uh, recognisable gameplay. Chuck us a comment below, tell me what you think of the Raspberry Pi, and I'll see you next time. Here, subscribe or naff off. Wake up, you've got to go to work tomorrow.